the fake news era, there are two groups of people who are particularly under attack. Journalists and women. Mika Brzezinski is taking a hit for both. Her life has largely played out before us. Join us for all the latest news and weather today at noon. At work, as co-host of MSNBC's Morning Joe. We're not covering this, all right? Is this this is, is my Paris Hilton statement. And, and in her personal life, as she navigates a very public relationship with her co-host Joe Scarborough, making not only the gossip columns, but Saturday Night Life. President Trump is at it again. Oh, He's uh, using a deeply offensive oh, word Jesus. when and describing what? Haiti and some African country. And just... She has also had to navigate being the target of President Trump's Twitter attacks, calling her low IQ and worse. And she has not backed down from giving it back to one of the most powerful men in the world. He appears to have a fragile, impetuous, childlike ego that we've seen over and over again, especially with women. We explore the tough world of journalism and politics through the eyes of Mika Brzezinski. Mika Brzezinski, welcome to Through Her Eyes. Thank you. Thank it you. It's a pleasure having you here. First of all, let's talk about that relationship with Donald Trump because you, you actually knew him before, right? Yes, we you did for your... a long time. What, what went wrong? I mean, what, what went wrong in the, that relationship? You know, we knew him as a colleague, a crazy uncle, a friend. We did things together. He gave money to my um, philanthropic events that I would take part in. NBC assigned us to do something for his show, The Apprentice. Was his personality different than the one that you know now? It is very different. Mm -hmm. I did not see a racist in that person's eyes and voice. I didn't hear one at all. Did you ever doubt his integrity? Yes, I did. A lot of people misunderstood the relationship. We were very critical of Donald Trump during the campaign. When he said racist things, we called him out on it. We even went and assailed him in private and said, you've got to stop this. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. And it's not what we know. And what did he say? He said, well, it works. And, or he'd say, okay, okay, I won't do it. Um, but you know, it works. And we're just like, you know what, we can't support this. Mm -hmm. And there were moments um, when he was on our show a lot. You know, a lot of people say, you elected Donald Trump because you right. let him on. Right. Unfortunately, um, and I mean this, unfortunately, Trump voters don't watch Morning Joe. <laughs> We'd have massive ratings across the country. So we put him on so that Americans, if they wanted to, could have a chance to see what he's made of and what he's about. And what he showed was a very weak, small, uh, more and more overtly racist um, individual who is obsessed with um, dictators and especially for some reason, Vladimir Putin. And we were the first to expose that. We, in real time, you can watch uh, the segment where he's on the air with us. Do you like Vladimir Putin's comments about you? Sure. When people call you brilliant, that's always good, especially when the person heads up Russia. He kills journalists that don't agree with him. Well, I think uh, our country does plenty of killing also, Joe. So, you know, what, what a lot you, of, there's a lot of stupidity that? going on in the world right now, Joe. A lot of killing going on, a lot of stupidity. And uh, that's the way it is. But uh, you didn't ask me the question. You asked me a different question. So that's fine. You can see our faces fall in real time, the relationship turning. Is that, was that to the turning point, you know, in, on was air one or of off air? It, there were a few. We also, he started trying to filibuster us. The breaking point for Mika took place in 2015, when Donald Trump called into Morning Joe to defend a controversial campaign speech he made against Muslims. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. I want to get our hands around a very difficult situation. All right, all right Donald. Hold on, Donald. You've got to let us ask questions. Go you ahead. can't just talk. No, you got to let us actually right, ask questions. You're that. just talking. All no, Muslims. No, 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 Donald, 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 Joe, Donald, 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 Donald. You're not going you to keep facts. talking. We will go to break. If you keep talking, we're going to ask you questions. All right, go to break. Go to break, everybody. Go to break. Go to break. Go to break right now. We'll be right back with more Morning Joe. Joe just hung up on him on TV. And that's never happened to him before. So he came back after the break and behaved. And 
it, you know, he definitely was obsessed with the show, with being on the show, because being on Morning Joe has something to do with being accepted in clubs that I think Donald didn't feel accepted in, polite society. So it was important to him. Um, Joe has often reported, and I can sort of see what he's saying, an obsession with me. And I, yeah. I, put, I was going to ask you about that. But. Yeah, I, I connect that directly to my father mm. and to being accepted again. Her father is Zbigniew Brzezinski. He was national security advisor for President Jimmy Carter and a frequent guest on the show. Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski. Hi, Dad. Also known as Good Morning Dad. The attacks were very personal. Very personal. And on I think your Do- intellect, on your look, on, right. like, on just oh, the personal Bleeding badly from right. a face look. Well, right. look, Donald Trump, um, I think felt that since I had such incredible respect for my father, that if I respected him, that would kind of give him that same branding. That's my only explanation for it. Mika's relationship with President Trump hit a new low when, in 2017, he tweeted that, quote, crazy Mika was bleeding badly from a facelift. The tweet set off a firestorm of backlash. The reviews are in, vulgar, crude, A new low. No, no, it's the same low. Senator Ben Sass joined other Republicans in his condemnation of the president, tweeting, please just stop. This isn't normal and it's beneath the dignity of your office. When that tweet came out, uh, I knew things had changed. And there have been times where um, He sent the National Enquirer after us, calling my daughters, calling my um, people who have worked for me over the years. That's um, scary. Personal friends. Was that ever scary for you? So I will say that it has gotten scary. Yeah. It has gotten scary. And um, we've made changes in our life to deal with the fact that it has gotten scary. I mean, as in you're worried about your safety? Security, yeah. Security, our family, our privacy, um, anything goes with him. Mika may be one of the more liberal-leaning voices on Morning Joe, but that hasn't stopped her from taking on some Democrats who spoke out against Senator Joe Biden's controversial Me Too moment. There's a lot of things I know about Joe Biden. He is extremely affectionate, extremely flirtatious in a completely safe way. In April, she came to Joe Biden's defense after he was accused by several women of touching them inappropriately. Democrats, you have to ask yourself, what what exactly is the line, the Me Too line you want to draw? Because you will live and die by that line. You uh, defended him and stuck your neck out for him. Tell me why. Because this was going down the wrong path. And I I actually think that that little um, eruption on my part changed things um, because people kind of pulled back and you saw like the entire narrative changing. I was really worried that the women who, women who have worked so hard to develop their voices, to tell their stories, to right the wrongs or at least right wrongs for the future women coming before them, I was worried that all that work would get thrown away. And I also know Joe Biden and I went on a limb because I know he's a good man And I know he's not a sexual predator. And we can't forget two incredible words as we go down this road and make, you know, society and the workplace better for our daughters. Those words are due process. And we can't forget them because they're important too. Mika also found herself in the midst of controversy when MSNBC political pundit and contributor to Morning Joe, Mark Halperin, was accused by nine women of sexual harassment and assault. The Daily Beast reported that Joe and Mika had discussed plans to collaborate with Halprin after he was let go from the company. The headlines for all those stories were very frustrating because they weren't right. And I would have told them that I am not attempting to rehabilitate Mark's career, that I'm covering the story. And the story at certain different turns in our relationship with Mark took a life of its own. And Mark will have to solve those problems himself. Um, in light of the fact when he uh, was revealed to have done some really terrible things in his past when he worked at ABC. And so when it broke, he was destroyed. He lost six jobs in one day. And as a 
as a human being with decent feelings about helping people, I talked to both sides and I tried my best and I failed at times. It didn't work. You know, it's complicated. And in terms of the future, he's on his own in terms of his next act. And I'm, I just, for the record, for all the headlines out there saying Mika wants to rehabilitate Mark, Mika and Joe, I'm not. And I don't expect him back on our show. Mika says the story that is not often told is how she is responsible for much of the show and Joe's success. I noticed this is a brilliant guy. And there's something about this network community of TV people that if you like Harvard, New England, something about all these executives seem to like know each other. And this guy from Florida, Southern Republican conservative politician seems so alien to them. And they were sort of, they had him in a box. And I saw a brilliant guy with a really open mind, with some ideas that he's held on to for years and evolved and developed them. I really saw someone who was great at television. And I I will just say, he came up with the show. I'm the reason it's still going. Because I I said, sit down, stop sucking up to everybody. You don't need to jump up and sweat all over. They're lucky to be on this show. Trust me, you are so good at what you do. I just need to make a space for you in what this world is. And that's what I did. And I ran the show, I managed it, I booked the show, I, ran, I did everything from the get-go, tried to make a space for this incredible voice and have him modulate that voice and develop who he is today. Mika says there's one area where she was not always empowered, her salary. The tipping point for her was when she discovered that she was earning 14 times less than Joe. She says it took her multiple attempts to earn equal pay. Out of that experience, she created and launched the Know Your Value series. I struggled with actually um, talking about my own monetary value um, at really key times in my career. And I found that a lot of women have this problem where they feel really uncomfortable talking about money for themselves or advocating for themselves. I decided to create a business called Know Your Value and get sponsors and do an event and really teach women in real time on stage how to know their value and communicate it effectively. I did this while I was an NBC anchor, while I was a host. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't ask for permission, like guys don't, so why should I? If I had asked NBC if I can do this, they would have said no. They said, you can't do that. I just did it. As part of her Know Your Value series, she wrote the book, Earn It. It's a guide to empower millennial women in the workplace. Mika says the inspiration was her co-author, Daniela Pierre Bravo, a 28-year-old dreamer who worked her way through college and took four buses overnight to come to New York City for her first job interview. I want to ask you about your co-author for Earn It. How much are you conscious about the subliminal messages that you're saying? Is I am supporting a dreamer in a time of American history where there's a lot of attacks on immigrants and on dreamers. You're absolutely right. I think the timing is absolutely perfect. But Daniela was the one who spoke to me. It was her story. And the fact that she's a dreamer, great. Listen, Donald Trump, take a look. Okay, this is what a dreamer looks like. Okay, and this is the American dream. It's certainly a great message. I can't say I planned it. It was Daniela. It was her incredible story. It was her timing. It was her precision. It was her attention to detail and the fact that she grew up undocumented with no sense of exactly whether or not her dreams would ever be realized because of her status. Well, I I personally appreciate when I came to America about 30 years ago, I started my life here with $400 a month. And so, uh, no, $400, period, not a month. And then here I am. By the way, that's how my parents came here, just like you. Mika is a daughter of immigrants. Her mother, Emily Brzezinski, is a professional sculptor and was born in Czechoslovakia. Her father, Zbigniew Brzezinski, was born in Poland and was a respected diplomat and a prolific author. My parents came here with absolutely nothing. My dad had nothing, and he graduated with highest honors from Harvard and uh, graduate school. My mother went to Wellesley. They had nothing. They were um, refugees from the war, from Mm -hmm. World War II. And my mother's uh, boat came across the Atlantic, was hit by a torpedo that didn't explode. I mean, her chances of survival let alone thriving in America, were so limited for so many reasons. And yet they were so scrappy and they earned it in so many ways. So what I saw in Daniela was what I know from my parents' story. 
and that is you've got to be able to make something from nothing. Well, talking about values, are you worried, given that you're a daughter of immigrants and you're co-author with an immigrant and here you are in front of an immigrant, are you worried about American values? Yes. Oh my gosh. Right now. I am so worried and I, I try to tr strike a balance every morning and Joe reminds me that there's a, a long game to this and that we're going to be okay. But being a daughter of immigrants and being, having my role model um, being Madeleine Albright, you know, who has her own story of survival, I've heard from people who've lived it how quickly it all can change. And I feel like we're, we're watching the beauty and the pillars of our democracy just melt, but melt away before our eyes. I always think when we're covering in the morning something egregious that Donald Trump has done, one of the most recent being talking about taking aid from a foreign government on, on an, a political opponent, and just saying it with such flipness, with such, such crassness. I immediately, when he does things like this, I think of my father on his deathbed. And when Trump's name came up, when I was reading him the paper in the hospital, how his face would cringe. And what I saw in his face was real pain, a real kind of knowledge that this was bad. And, you know, seeing it in his eyes, hearing it from him, someone who's worked all of his life doing what he's done, uh, working on the world stage and understanding the, um, the detail, the attention to detail and history and the work over decades that it took to get where we are, I worry so much. And I think of him every time one of these assaults happen, which almost seems like every day. What do you think needs to happen now in the upcoming run for the election, for a new election? Do you think the media needs to do anything different to learn from the past um, and to regain people's trust? The only way we can fight back as the media being assaulted by this president on a daily basis is to be the best we can, to stick to the facts. You know, there were days that I, I said things that were shrill, that I said things that were, I used inappropriate language. Those are days I lose. If we get our facts slightly wrong, if we overmodulate our language, if we become the story, those are the days we lose. Because it is an emotional time to have what we do and the very, very um, basis of who we are uh, torn down every day. The value of the truth is being destroyed by this president. This is something we've never seen before in the history of America. There's Republicans and Democrats, and then there's Trump which is a whole different ball game. Someone not following the law. Someone probably taking part in impeachable offenses by the day. And you watch some of the more disciplined players in this as you cover the story and you realize we have to hold the line and just cover the story. We can't be the story. I wish we could do more, but we have to hold the line. Yeah. One of the most talked about aspects of Mika's life is her relationship with her co-host, Joe Scarborough. Have you ever not this been wrong, like, sweetie? Uh, oh, God, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a no. That's a no. We just crossed the line. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. The two, who recently married, fell in love on the job. Are you ever going to tell the story of your relationship with Joe and how I'm beginning it started? To. Yes. I'm beginning to. I, um, look, I... I've gone through some changes that a lot of people have gone through yeah, in their families. And, and lifted publicly. I do a lot of talks, and I talk about going through a divorce, um, having kids that are struggling. You know, the things that while they're happening, you can't share, and you start feeling like you're two or three people. And it was really hard, and it took such a toll on my mental health. And I came close to having a complete breakdown. I, I had about two years there where I would cry all the time. And it was hard, and then I'd show up in the air and I'd be everything I was, and then I'd try and be the mom I was. I was failing at a lot of things, and I was struggling. And I would um, leave my house, actually, because there's so many people there all the time, and walk around town crying. And I was going through, my parents were getting ill, I was getting divorced, and I was just, just strapped. And I was crying and weeping as I was walking, and this guy pulls up, and he's like, hi, um, this is kind of weird, but I drive by every day, and I see you walking here and crying, and um, I'm a therapist. <laughs> and he goes, I just want to tell you, I hope this is okay. It might be inappropriate, but what you're doing, this crying this hard every day, that's not okay. <laughs> wow. And it was, a, was like, wow, I realized, my God, I'm, I need help. 
and I got help. And so why it's kind of hard to always talk about how everything happened is that it's hard. I had some really hard times getting to where I am, getting to this happy moment. And a lot of people had to go through a lot. And so it's not like a perfect story and it doesn't, you know, it's not even the salacious story that people think it is. It's hard. So in terms of Joe and where we are now, I'm so happy. But it has, it has been a long road of a lot of things building and breaking down. And it wasn't as easy and pretty as it looks at all. It was, it was a journey. And I'm glad we're here. Thank you so much, Mika Brzezinski. <laughs> well, It's really you. a pleasure having you thank here. Thank you for having me. Thank you.